this section, we're going to start by just going through some basic definitions for nuclear materials and to show you some pictures of what some of the basic materials that we would expect to see throughout the fuel cycle are. So let's just start with what is nuclear material. Well, nuclear material is any source material or special, nuclear, or special fissionable material that, uh, uh, that we might expect to see. Um, what is source material? So what is meant by that? Well, that includes natural uranium, depleted uranium, or thorium, which are materials that we might uh, find in, in Mother Nature, in the case of natural uranium and thorium, uh, or depleted uranium. All of these are materials that we then could use as a source material at the front end of the fuel cycle, uh, which could then lead to special fissional material, uh, which is plutonium-239, U-233, uranium enriched in U-235, or U-233. Special fissional material is the material that we would actually use for radiation in, for instance, a reactor, or that could be used in the manufacture of a nuclear explosive device. Also, there are radiological materials. Radiological materials are simply any radioactive material that is not nuclear material. So that would include medical isotopes, industrial isotopes, uh, or waste products. This particular picture, uh, which is a fairly complicated picture, shows the basic buildup and decay chain you would expect to see for uranium. Uh, what is displayed here is a set of boxes that shows each of the individual isotopes that would exist for an element. So for instance, for the element uranium, you could have U-234, U-235, 236, 237, 238, or 239. Uh, the only naturally occurring isotopes of uranium are U-234, U-235, and U-238. And of those naturally occurring isotopes, 99.3% of all that naturally occurring uranium is U-238. Only a very small fraction, 0.7%, is U-235. And there's a very small fraction of U-234, uh, much less than that. Um, of those isotopes, uh, when we want to use this in a nuclear reactor, we would like to enrich in the isotope U-235. Uh, typically, power reactors um, would enrich the naturally occurring material from 0.7% to somewhere around 3 to 5% U-235. Uh, and this material then, this U-235, is what then would cause uh, fissions inside of the reactor and give you power. So most of the reactions then that would occur in the U-235 isotope, for instance, would be fission reactions. However, on occasion, when irradiating a reactor, some of the neutrons will get absorbed in what we call a radiative capture reaction, which is a reaction then that would lead to the production of, let's say, the isotope U-236. That U-236 could also absorb a neutron and produce U-237. U-237 then could beta decay, which is releasing an electron, to produce neptunium-237. Um, neptunium-237 is a different element. Um, than uranium. Uh, neptunium-237 is of the element neptunium, and so each of the rows on this uh, chart are individual elements, so the element of uranium, neptunium, plutonium, americium, and then curium. As we irradiate this material, U-238, for instance, would absorb a neutron and produce U-239. U-239 then would go through two subsequent beta decays to plutonium-239. Uh, plutonium-239, then, is the material that's principally used in most nuclear weapons. Um, plutonium-239, if it continues to be irradiated in a reactor, would produce the higher mass plutonium isotopes of plutonium-240, plutonium-241, and plutonium-242. And of those isotopes, plutonium-241, for instance, could beta decay to americium-241, which could continue the chain. So as we continue to irradiate a fuel in a reactor, we would expect to see some of these other isotopes get produced. The elements neptunium, americium, curium, and so forth are, are uh, elements that we refer to as minor actinides. Uh, they're small players inside of the reactor in that they are small absorbers, um, uh, things like that. The principal um, elements of interest to us are uranium and plutonium, both of which can serve as fuel sources inside the reactor. 